So the idea behind this chapter is to continue what we were talking about in the previous chapter. Why does the outside world matter? How is it affecting your organisation? Now, there are a number of models that we can use in this particular chapter, but we are only going to use two of them. We're only going to look at two models to keep things nice and simple. The more models we have, sometimes the more confusing it gets as to which ones we should use. So we'll just try and keep things nice and easy. So, the two big models we've got, both of them by a guy called Michael Porter. The first model is talking about why certain nations, certain countries have advantages. Now, the reason why this is important is because in the last chapter we said you have to worry about global competitors. As a company based in the UK, you need to worry about competitors from Germany, from France, from the US, from India, from China, from wherever. Some of those competitors will have an advantage over a British company, not because they are better run, but simply because where they are based gives them advantages. And that's what this particular model is all to do with. This is becoming more and more important as we get global competition, as we have global customers. It means we need to worry about companies in countries a long way away that have never bothered us before, but now they are able to be successful. So, Porter says that there are four reasons why companies in particular countries are successful. And what he is saying is that the companies are successful not because they are particularly brilliant, but simply because of where they are based. So, the four things are factor conditions, strategy, demand and supporting industries. And we'll look at each of those in a little bit more detail. Now, before we worry about these and look at it in any too much great detail, a word of warning. Porter's National Diamond is a hard theory to understand. The good news about Porter's Diamond is if the examiner wants you to use it, he will make it perfectly obvious. He will talk about what the factor conditions are. He'll talk about the demand. He will make it very obvious that he's talking about each of these four areas. All you will have to do is say, here is an example of a factor condition. Here is an example of a supporting industry. And if you can do that, you'll get a reasonable mark on this kind of question. So you don't need to understand exactly what each bit is. What you have to do is to apply it, to read the text and put bits into various different boxes. Here's a factor condition. Here's a supporting industry.